This video is sponsored by Focus Home Interactive. A massive thank you to them. So this is SnowRunner, a game which I have featured a few times before on my channel. It is the successor of MudRunner. So yeah, basically this is now available on Steam and Nintendo Switch. It was already available on the Epic Games Store, Xbox and PlayStation. And also there is a link down below if you would like to buy it. So we're going to get straight into it today and I do have many things to cover. So here we are, this is Amur in Russia, and basically this is all new in Phase 4. The main storyline, I don't want to spoil it too much, but um, just to put it simply, just to give you a bit of a summary, is to help to rebuild various buildings of an old Russian rocket launch site and make it operational again. So that includes fixing roads, bridges and everything, so that you can transport different materials, rocket parts and everything like that to the correct buildings and uh, of course the mission control building needs to be fixed as well. We obviously can't do all of this in one video but we can definitely do something and I think it would be quite nice to focus on a pretty big move and that is the rocket itself. Now there is actually loads of work to do before this and after this but it would just be amazing to see the thing move. So to begin with what we need to do is actually put the correct customization on this truck. So we need the high saddle just here, so we're going to purchase that. It's actually free, but it's uh, in the garage you can buy things and it will always say purchase or uninstall. So that's what we've just done, we've got it fitted. We can leave the garage, of course, if you want to, you can buy different trucks, loads to choose from. You can also use mods uh, on PC. Mods have been implemented, they've been in for a while, uh, through mod.io. So I think, to begin with, it might even be worth scouting out the best route. Now, as I said, bridges have been fixed already, so we don't really have to worry about that too much, but what we do have to worry about is getting stuck. And getting stuck is very, very easy, because the roads around here are absolutely treacherous. So let's just get back into the garage and we're going to see what the best sort of scouting out vehicle is. So you can see we have loads to choose from. I'm very tempted by this one just here. I think we'll purchase and deploy that first of all. So here it is. And we are going to try and find the most passable route just very, very quickly to begin with. I'm just going to show you what is actually happening here just to really clarify things. This here is where we're going to be picking up the rocket from. It's already on a trailer. You can actually see it because the, the minimap is so detailed. It's fantastic. Uh, we are just down here. We're, we're in the garage just here, but we have to get it to here. And obviously we can't just cross. So we're going to have to go all the way around here over the bridges. Uh, you can see we've even got some pretty damaged bridges as well. This one here is non-existent. It's been replaced. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a real challenge. But just to begin with, we need to figure out how to get the actual truck, which is going to be towing the trailer, to there. Do we have to go all the way around? How treacherous is this road? Let's find out. And that is the exact reason why we would use a scout truck, like this one here. So yeah, if, if you're interested in the season pass, of course, it does cover the previous three phases. This is phase four. There has been three before this. So it's um, definitely one way of you know getting hold of substantial amounts of content. Wow, it's really, really big drop just there. Um, and this looks very slippery. Yeah, so the season pass, it's a great way of getting hold of the, the latest phases, basically the latest installments in the game. This is really slippery. What I've just done is I've put the left hand side of the vehicle on some nice fresh snow to try and get some traction when we come back up here. But if we don't get traction, then our best friend's probably gonna be the winch. Now you can actually winch from various different places, but if you do just press F, you can uh, sometimes winch to the nearest winching point if there are any available. Okay, we, we seem to have done that, that's fantastic. There we go. So we are free to continue. I think there might be a crossing somewhere just up here on the left hand side. Although it might be a bit optimistic. Yeah, just there. We have so many trees. But that is a crossing. That would get us straight across to the road we want to be on. 
Uh, let, let's just check out, out the alternative routes, because if it is better that way, we'll certainly take that way. But the vehicle we're going to be driving isn't really going to appreciate deep mud, <laughs> although I think it has quite a bit of deep mud coming. Uh, now we do have the high and low gearboxes on some vehicles. This one has low and auto, obviously reverse as well. The truck we're going to be using very soon does have high and low, so that's going to really help. This contract is called Reach for the Stars, which is basically the transportation of the rocket to the new launch facility. Okay, so look at this. It's pretty much impassable. I don't think we're going to be taking a rocket this way. So at least we now know. Let's head back to our truck. We'll leave this here in case we need it in the future. We do have a full tank of fuel. It's going to get through it, towing a big rocket. So as I said, we may have to buy and deploy a fuel tanker. This is going to be interesting, seeing how this performs going up this incredibly slippery hill. And that is a big drop, like I said. The front could hit the ground, not quite. Uh, we're battling our way up here. I think we're just going to have to assist ourselves with a winch. Let's just pull it over here. But yeah, within this new region, we actually do have four maps. So it's a vast expanse, all open world. You are basically free to do whatever you want. And there's also two new vehicles as well. There is the Khan 317 and also the Zigzag 605R. Okay, I think the winch has got us over that. There we go. As I said, it is our best friend. It's so useful. There's also new and exclusive vehicle skins and stickers. Okay, there we go. We have made it. Right, so we just need to drop down. Where that sign is, we're going to turn left. This could go really badly wrong, but all we have to do is cross it. Once we're crossed, we can go and pick up the rocket. And then I think this may actually perform better since we don't currently have any rear weight, and having some ballast on the drive wheels could be really helpful. Okay, I'm going to probably just very quickly time lapse myself getting across here. I can see quite a bit of winching is going to be required. We've made it. So yeah, you can see from that, it wasn't really ideal, but it has really been a helpful shortcut. It probably was way faster than going round. So next we do have another challenge. It's a very slippery hill. And yeah, you can just see how the rear drive wheels are spinning. We just need to have the weight of the rocket on the back and then I'm sure we'll be fine. Now there's also four new trials. You may be familiar with the trials. Four new ones, and I'm hoping to actually show them a bit later. This is going to be really edgy VC stuff. There's so many places where we could get stuck. There's so many places where we could actually flip the entire truck. The whole thing could go. The rocket could go flying um, and not in the way we want it to. So yeah, you've really got to sort of plan your routes, make sure you know exactly where you're going. And ideally, <laughs> it's good to scout out the, the road first so you know exactly how deep that mud or snow actually is. I've just dropped it back into auto because we have climbed the hill. No issues, just obviously sliding a bit. So the rocket is located in the building just up here where the uh, sort of magnifying glass is. As I said, there are loads and loads of tasks and contracts which lead up to this moment, and there are way more following as well. But because it is free roam, you can stumble across tasks everywhere. There are literally hours and hours of gameplay. 
Okay, you need to be careful here. I need to make sure it's aligned as well as possible. I think that's not too bad. Okay, probably could have been a bit better. But there we go, we have the rocket. So from this moment onwards, I, ha I need to be extra careful. Luckily, we don't have to go back through the swamp. Well, not through that swamp. There's, there's probably more. So let's just really quickly plan the route. This is what's so fantastic. You can actually see the rocket there. You can see we've pulled it out of there. I think what we're going to do is go... Let me just remove those two markers. If we go up here, hopefully this is going to work. Go down here. Cross those bridges. I don't know how it's going to turn out. It looks like, yeah, this bridge here has gone. Collapsed and been replaced with another one. Um, that's going to be tricky... I don't want to go down there. I'll probably never get back up. So you can see how easy it is to really plot the course. And that is where we want to be. That looks quite steep. Uh, something you can do if you know that you're going to be getting to somewhere which is incredibly steep and there's nowhere to winch to, you can actually get a, a heavy lorry or another vehicle and you can, you can park it up there ready so you can then attach the main vehicle to it. So in this case, it's, it's, our, it's our truck here. And you can actually uh, you can winch to it. You'd probably want to make sure that you're winching uh, against the lorry, which is already pretty well wedged, so you're not going to pull it down with you. Okay, this is tight. This is going to take a bit of concentration. So it's not just a case of getting the rocket. You're not just rebuilding the rocket, getting the pieces for it. Um, it's things like rebuilding the houses for the workers at the launch pad and the mission control and everything basically getting the whole system underway again I do like it when you can get some fresh snow under the wheels it does seem to help so let's just try and get them under the, across there get some fresh snow and we can see if we can pull this up look at the size of this thing it's huge so when we're not in extremely tricky moments, I will probably just speed the video up slightly. Um, and, and also when we do get to an incredibly t a tricky area, if it's going to take like 10 minutes to get out, I will also speed the video up then. Okay, we have made it. I am in auto. I think auto is pretty good. It does seem to work quite well with various vehicles. But low and high also really do have their uses. Okay, right, so it looks like we have got a fairly open piece of road here. Obviously, we've got a lot of rocks and stuff which we could hit, which we're not going to hit if we can help it. Um, but I think just for this little stretch, we're going to be okay. Wow, what happened there? Okay, it looks like sections of road have actually been replaced with concrete, maybe? And other sections of road have just turned to mud. So, just to recap, we do have three cameras. We've got the one that shows us the rear, which can be very useful, especially when stuck. So you, you can then use this to winch, winch the trailer. Oh, what do we have in front? We have first person view and of course third person view and you can actually put the beacons on if you'd like to put the beacons on if we do come to a standstill here which I think is pretty likely I will switch them on yeah I'm gonna get stuck on those rocks okay so it's a moment like this where we just need to get the winch going again so this is where we can turn the beacons on there we go I think where's the best place to winch to Maybe just that very local pole. Okay, so even for the winch, some things are a little bit too tricky. Right, just need to get it over the rock. And we are possibly free. There we go. We are free. Back into high mode. The road is actually, yeah, opening up again. And when I was looking at the minimap, I did see some really 
horrific looking areas, it's going to be a real challenge. There we go. Fuel is always a concern. I am hoping to get out of this particular map before we need to refuel. We're not passing a fuel refill point. If we were, I would definitely use it. Okay, there we go. The rocket is on its way again. Got some deep mud here. Wow, look at this. The road has... It's, it's just turned to uh, drifts. Snow drifts and possibly hidden mud holes. Yeah, this is where you've got to be careful not to flip the thing. Okay, <laughs> that seems to have worked. And here comes our first bridge. I think we probably do have some mud before that. So if we can maybe stay on the edge. Yep, that's okay. Okay, yeah, so we're actually taking this to Cosmodrome, which is not this map, it's the next map, which this one leads into. Fantastic. There we go, we've got a good shot of it crossing the first bridge. I do have to keep my eye on the road as much as possible, though. I really don't want to lose this. You can recover the vehicles back to the garage as well. That's that's really for extreme situations where you've actually rolled it or something, or you are just completely stuck. But yeah, you, you can uh, you can play this in co-op. You can complete all the con uh, contracts with all of your all of your friends and the tasks. Right, I think this is actually the bridge which got destroyed. It is. There's absolutely nothing left of this thing. So, yeah, we need to get across on the left-hand side. Let me just drop that back into high mode. I say drop it back. It's not really. It's just more control because it's not always trying to change gear automatically. I think if we get to the left of what looks to be a very muddy area... Ah, it's going to low. Oh, that's digging deep. Um... Okay. That's really... <laughs> that's not worked. I was hoping that I would actually avoid the mud and it, I've actually gone into it. So, I need to try and figure out if there is a winching point anywhere near here. No. Okay. Right at the back there is a winch point. Let's just pull it out of there. Sometimes you just know when you've gone too deep. Right, release the winch. I'm going to try this in auto. And I know it looks crazy going to the deeper area, but you just never know. Bit of trial and error. Although it doesn't look promising, we are moving. I'm free. Finally, after turning the world backwards and forwards, I have managed to get through the mud. If you don't like the lighting, you can actually go back onto the map menu by pressing M on PC, and you can change the time of day. There's no consequences. Just, you can skip forward six hours at a time. Or roughly six hours. Right, so now we're really climbing. I don't think it's going to be too bad because I always like the look of trees <laughs> whenever you've got loads of trees you just know that you've got something to winch to back there for example there was nothing At this point you'd probably think, oh, it's better to go down there. Uh, no, <laughs> we've got to go up there. So let's just see how this goes. 
obviously everybody has a different way of doing things, so there is a, probably a very good chance that you're going to be able to do this much better than me. But I just love the idea of anybody being able to try it. It's like off-roading, mudding, snowing. <laughs> you can just always try it out. And because of the physics, because of the way they are, it's probably incredibly helpful for real life as well. Okay. I think I'm going to get stuck here. Now you know I said sometimes you need to use another truck so you can actually attach a winch to it. I think this is that moment. I think somehow we're going to have to get another one here. Is there space to pass and will I be okay parking a rocket here without it sort of slipping away? I don't know. <laughs> Let's just put it there. Obviously I need to put it in a position where I can actually get back. We can, well, we should be able to pass just there, hopefully. So what can we do? Let's just head back to the garage. So as we're here in the garage, this is a fantastic opportunity for me to show you the two new vehicles. So first of all, we have the Khan 317 Sentinel, just here. And you can see all the details about it. And of course, you can change many different things. So many configurations that can be adjusted. Look at all the wheels, a huge selection of wheels to go for, different winches, diff lock, and other configurations like the engine and the gearbox for a major component. And here is the other one, look at this beast, absolutely massive. So yeah, uh, with this sort of thing, the 605R, it's going to be absolutely amazing in mud. Look at the thing, it's, like it's designed for being in the mud. So yeah, this is something which you would have to explore the world to unlock, but it is part of this phase four instalment and you can see it's just here okay so let's see what the best truck is going to be as an anchor and possibly uh, to refuel from i've just found this this looks very interesting i think we will we will go with this but first we are going to have to customize several things so the fuel tank certainly purchase that um, I don't think we need a snorkel, not for this. Spare wheel, no, I don't think so. Yeah, let's just go for a really good winch. You can just see how things are customizable here. Um, yeah, because it's going to be going on some really bad terrain. Um, we want to be going for some absolutely excellent wheels. So we've got some chains, uh, stock suspension, yep and gearbox off-road and the engine we have to go with the one we have right so that looks brilliant it is deployed okay so here it is we have got a full tank of diesel I don't know how good it's going to be at gripping but it's got some pretty good tyres on it, so it really shouldn't be too bad. Let's just put some lights on. There we go. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna really risk it. I'm gonna go with the shortcut <laughs> and see if we can actually make it. The shortcut gets incredibly narrow, and there is a, a really high risk of tipping. But let's just see. Wow, it's absolutely flying up here. Even the scout vehicle struggled. I'm impressed.
Look at the width of this road. It's actually hard to believe I even made it this far. Because, yeah, one tip. And no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, I was never going to make it. Oh, crikey. It just goes to show the risks which are really here. And, um, yeah, if that does happen, as I said, we can recover. So it's not the end of the world. Okay, so I have made it back to this location. I had to recover. I'm wondering if maybe adding a winch again. Winches are so useful. Uh, might keep us in place if we keep it tensioned. But things, yeah, as soon as that back wheel goes off the edge, we, we, we've pretty much had it. Pretty much doomed. Because <laughs> it's quite top heavy. And this is obviously not designed for lorries or trucks. The slightest tip. And we're over. First person may help. Again, that might be personal preference. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> this is tense. If it's possible to take this along here without tipping, I would be absolutely amazed. I'm trying my best. I'm uh, no, no. I'm really hoping it's not going to go because we're actually almost there. No, yeah, that's going to go. Right. Okay. I need to think logically. We want to keep as far to the left as possible. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Wait. Can I winch it back? Oh, that would be immense. Can you imagine if I can winch that back up? Yes. Come on. <laughs> no, if this thing goes over, I've had it. Whoa. <laughs> is that even possible? Well, it is because it just happened. Sorry, I'm getting so excited here. I thought I'd have, to re I'd have to repeat that again. That is amazing. Okay. Um, let's continue, if we can. I'm a bit stuck. So it's true, the winch really can help you there. If it wasn't for the winch, we would, would have gone. I think my time might still be coming, but... Come on, you can do it. You've been so good. That's amazing. Oh, look what we're crossing there. Wow. Okay, so I don't know what's over the brow of this hill, but what I do know is the bridge is over there, so we're not that far away. Of course, I still have to continue and do the rest of the uh, of the course. Uh, so let's just make sure we can get out of here without any issues, and then I'll see you potentially over at the rocket. It just depends how things go. And there it is, the rocket. So, I just need to get over these rocks, easier said than done, and then we can refuel, and then we can hopefully get up to the top, we can use this as an anchor point. Yeah, this is going to possibly damage this vehicle, although it doesn't seem to mind bulldozing over it. That's great. Ah, good job that was there. Let's just pull that back, again, <laughs> second time today. There we go, keep it attached. The rocks are obviously problematic. Okay, well, we're close enough, so let's just get it refueled. Change truck, there we go. And yeah, refuel. Okay, there we go. 
first time around I actually took the fuel out of this one's fuel, fuel tank instead of the actual tanker but now they are both full so that is fantastic uh, so now we can attempt to progress I think getting winch off the front if that is possible is there anywhere probably not okay so we're going to winch across here just to pull us off those rocks hopefully there's a big rock under there there we go if we do happen to tip which I'm really hoping we don't then yeah we can hopefully winch it back up but that seems good right then so yeah all we have to do is put this in a position where it hopefully won't get dragged down the hill as well <laughs> although it might do Right, so here we go. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a bit light. Yep, doesn't help with the wheel. Doesn't help. It doesn't help with the handbrake actually. Doesn't also help with the rock underneath the front wheel. But that's the general idea. It is actually working. If we can just get over the rock, there we go. If I now swap to the the lead vehicle. We attach a winch to the back, from the back to the front, and then drive. We can turn on the engine of the other truck, and you can see we're driving both. But sadly, it's just yeah. Well, we put it into put it into the low. We'll try again, but it looks like this might be a step too far. So as you can see, I have sadly not succeeded this time, but there are many things that you can change. The truck itself, the tyres, gearbox, engine, so many things that have to really be correct. I only had to get uh, to here from here. Okay, so next we're going to try and drive the Khan 317 Scout vehicle through the fairly swampy cut through. But first, I thought it'd be quite nice just to show you the global map. We have spent this whole video so far on the Uska uh, River map, but as you can see, there are three more, all of which have their own challenges. So here it is, as we saw earlier, the Khan 317 Sentinel. Let's get that purchased. I think it would be quite nice to modify it as well. So if we go into the customize page, you can see we have a selection of different things here. Some things have to be unlocked, various different engines, the gearboxes, but we can choose a tuned or raised suspension. Oh, look at that. Because yeah, I want to go through that really swampy cut through area where the power lines are. That's even higher. Okay, we'll go for that. Purchase. As for the tires themselves, let's go for something really big and chunky. Look at that, it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, many different options and it's not just like you're going on the looks of them. You can see the wheel performance here. We want something which is really good in mud. Mud and off-road. So that is good in mud. Excellent off-road. Okay, that is a serious contender. These are the mud tires, obviously. On-road poor, but that doesn't really matter. Let's go for them. Purchase. This is what's so fantastic about it. It's just so customizable. Okay, I don't think we need a super amazing winch, but let's just go for extended. Diff lock, yep, engageable. Uh, snorkel, not really required, but yep, front facing. And finally, frame add-ons, small roof rack, or trunk repair supplies, or both. I think we will, yeah, we'll have both. Okay. Nice. Right, so there it is. Let's leave the garage and let's see how well this can go through that very swampy area. As we know, it's not supposed to be great on-road with these tyres, but it should be absolutely fantastic off-road. Of course, getting over the incredibly slippery hill might be a challenge. Let's have all-wheel drive switched on. As for the diff lock, I think we probably have to be in low range 
Yep, have to be in low gear. So we'll put it in low gear. We'll put diff lock on. Here's an internal view. It's also, I think it's going dark. So we may have to uh, skip time in a second. But that is battling on. Look at that. Put some lights on. Okay, this is where we've always struggled. Every, well, pretty much every vehicle, <laughs> with the exception of the fuel truck, has struggled just here. So if we get it onto the side, yeah, it's a bit muddy there, but the tyres probably like that. Probably really helps with the traction. Then we can really get going. Of course, we can still winch. I've been going on about winching throughout the entire video, but it is uh, it's very important, very useful. So how well do you think it's going to do? How well do you think it's going to get through the mud? As we saw, the big heavy truck, which was towing the rocket, just sank. I think this is going to be quite impressive. Okay, we're almost at the top of the hill. It was okay, actually, it did that surprisingly well. We'll put it back into auto. Take the diff lock off. We'll be putting it on momentarily. Okay, right. Into low, diff lock on. Let's see if we can cross this area without using a winch. Probably very, very tricky, but I'm still intrigued to find out. Okay, well, with the exception of that first entrance point, we haven't needed the winch. It's done really well. It just goes to show how crucial the winch is, though. It can get you out of these very tricky situations. Right, so let's go to a, an area we haven't visited yet. Let's go into uh, this lower part, back into auto mode. Hopefully get a bit of speed up. Yeah, is that sun rising or going down? It is evening. I thought it was. Let's go to morning. Right then. So yeah, as I've said, bridges have to be repaired. They've already been done here. But there are so many tasks, contracts, challenges to do. And with the uh, the previous three phases of the game's release, uh, there have indeed been six new maps, ten new vehicles, and other stuff as well. Okay, this is quite rough. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, showcase the 317 Sentinel. I think the road disappears here. What is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at this. It's sort of... Oh, that's taking some damage. Broken concrete slabs by the look of it. Looks like a temporary solution. Looks like the land must have sunk away at some point or something. Okay, so yeah, we have another bridge just down here. And if we turn right, we have a very challenging little uh, snow road. It's amazing through here. Okay, yes, as we know, these tyres are not designed for road use, so they're going to be better off-road. But look at this. We may have to drop it back into low and put diff lock on. Yep, we're starting to dig. Okay, diff lock on. It makes all the difference. Obviously, we don't have the speed, but we have the control, and it means we can still move instead of just sitting there digging. Well, it seems like a very durable thing. Uh, I probably should have used this as our initial scout vehicle. But there we go. It looks good too, it looks really nice. And I guess you could say you have a a tyre for every event. Whether you're on road, off road, on snow, on mud, or in mud. Now I have been here before and this I, I never achieved getting up here. It was extremely slippery. You can see we're just sliding away. 
I think you'd probably only be able to do this with chains. It's just amazing. We'll have to try it again someday. But this just seems to be the most tricky area for ice. It's just a fantastic test ground. Luckily we have a winch, so we can get back. Okay, so I think it's going to be nice to now take a look very quickly at some of the trials. As I said, there are four new trials in Phase 4. So here we are back on the main menu. If we go into the trial mode, I really did like the look of this one here. So there is a time limit. In the allotted time, visit all locations marked on your map in any order. This seems interesting. Rewards, finish four trials to unlock hood ornaments. Okay, so here we are. Escape from Tratyarkov. Time for some maneuvering practice. You'll get a good set of wheels, a full fuel tank, and all the claustrophobic close quarters you could ever wish for. And all you have to do is to check on a few spots I've marked for you. The clock's ticking. First of all, let's take a look at our map. You can see we do have quite a few places. They're all listed here. The time is ticking, so we are going to restart in just a second. Um, but just sort of having a bit of a sneaky advantage here. So the Lumberyard is there. Service shacks are there. Let's just see how far we can go. And I wonder if the time increases every time you reach somewhere. Let's find out. Okay, off we go. We're in auto. It might be better to be in high, possibly. We'll keep it in auto for now. But the first location, as you can see, is just here. How do you get there, though? That's the thing. I think because it is a time trial, it's a case of thinking very quickly. And in some cases, you may think so quickly that you just drive into random things. Come on, let's get into there. Nice. Okay, we, we don't have a time increase every time you find something. So we really do have only five and a half minutes left. Okay, I know there was a place just up here. I don't know what's closer. I think up here is probably the best idea. Okay, and we can check the map any time, but obviously that does use our time up. Okay, there's definitely a location just up there on the left-hand side. Um, right, service shacks, they are, they're just around here. Nice, don't drive into the fence. Brilliant, okay. Drive straight forwards, back out. We have 4 minutes and 50, uh, sorry, 4 minutes and 47 seconds left. I think this time we're going to go up behind this building. Of course, yeah, it's not the fastest vehicle ever, but it's very amphibious. And you can see the steering. It takes quite a bit of space to manoeuvre. The pressure is on. I guess one wrong move, if you go to the wrong one first, there's no set order, but there is sort of a logical order. If you don't go to the most logical one next, it might be a make or break situation. Oh wow, this is deep. Okay, all wheel drive is always on. We can winch, might be worth winching. Dangerous water level. Oh wow, it looks really deep. Maybe also don't drive in a straight line. It's definitely a real test of skill. Fuel is no issue though, so that's nice. Okay, I think we're going to have to check the map. We have three places left really quickly. Um, village is right here. Okay, let's go to the village. I'm actually doing better than I thought I would do though. We're crossing them off pretty quickly. Come on, let's go. I guess if I was in manual, I could really shift the gearbox pretty quickly. It needs to be pulled over to the right on a winch. That'll probably speed things up as well. Uh, right, let's go through here. So I can see the village, but what's the best route? I'm going to attempt to go through... Oh, maybe not. Yeah, let's go through here. Okay, <laughs> let's get through the uh, the reeds. 
This is a real challenge. I can see why they're called trials. It's a great idea. Yes, we've got another one just here. So that means we only have two left in two and a half minutes. Biggest problem is they're not actually here exactly. They are on the other side. There is a bridge. Let's try and cross. Um, of course, just bear in mind, this is only one of many trials. I don't think that's cut through. Uh, no, no, maybe, maybe. No, I don't think so. Maybe I could drive off there. You see, one wrong move and you might mess it all up. Very competitive. Uh, right. Um, please don't flip. No, no, no. Yes. Very nice. After all that, the bridge has already collapsed. We need to find a crossing. And fast. Um, well, I guess this is a way. Just don't want to flip it upside down, because that would just end everything. Also, the water is fairly fast moving. I don't want to get sucked away. Just a minute and a half left. Come on, you could do it. <laughs> yeah, it's pulling me. I can feel it. We have engine damage. Come on. That's fast flowing water. That did well. There's probably a much better place to cross. Great, we've got loads of boulders. Just one minute to go. Okay, I think there is one just around the corner. Sort of dead in front of us. If I can get one more, I'll be happy. But we're not going to fit through there. No. How? I can even see it. There are tracks going this way, so maybe we can go around. Nope. Okay. Somehow, you see, this is the thing about it, you've got to really plan your route. Not bad though. I got all but two. Well, it wouldn't really be a challenge if it was easy. Replayability. That's the other thing. Okay, there we go. We didn't achieve it. Um, but for a first attempt, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So what would have been the best way to go? We're here. As you saw, we came up here. It looks like we might have been able to cross here. But yeah, that needs a bit more thinking about. Oh, look, maybe I could have gone around here. That would have worked. But there you go, that is a trial. And as I've said, there are loads, loads of trials to go at. Uh, they have different objectives, they're not all the same. Uh, so if you don't want to be sort of against the time, against the clock, you don't have to be. So you can see there's just loads of different objectives to achieve. For example, with this one here, deliver multiple large pipes to the service station, fuel reserves are limited and truck recovery is restricted. Recovery is not allowed, so that is the limiting factor there. There's always something to, uh, to make it even more challenging. So, very interesting. Anyway, I think this is actually going to conclude this sort of first look video at the Phase 4 of SnowRunner, the Amur Oblast region of Russia. Very, very nice. I really do like the look of it. Obviously challenging, lots of stuff to do, loads of tasks. Um, but I think I have sort of summarised it there. As I said, the link is down below. I'd also like to really thank Focus Home Interactive for the sponsorship. It is very much appreciated. And um, yeah, try it out for yourself. Thanks for watching and see you again very soon. Bye for now.